and so I, I lo and behold, call, get all, get the governor on the phone. What was the time frame of this? Uh, well, this is in 2009. Okay. Or 2009 or 2010. So I get Bill Ritter on the phone. Lo and behold, he's a cycling fan. He had been to numerous editions of the Coors Classic he, when he was at law school at, at CU Boulder. And we hit it off. And we started this discussion about how do we bring professional cycling back to Colorado. Okay. And so very, very important to you in uh, 2011 to, to, to get that conversation going again. And so here we are. Uh, 2017. This means a lot. It's not just a bike race. It's like it's what they're trying. They're attempting to do for a first time bringing yeah. it back. Like it's it's very contingent on a lot of success over the next three days. Yep. And they've tied it in with a lot of great music, like music that I believe is like right in your wheelhouse too, oh, right? Totally. Like they obviously know what Coloradans like, and and they want people to come down and enjoy yep. the music. Watch the bike race, and there's art fest type vendors involved. But there's this, a lot at stake. It's, then, it's then, a big deal. And this idea that it's a ticketed event. So you, you, you look at cycling, no matter where you are, you could be in, in Denver or in Paris or in Rome. I don't care where you are. How does it, how does it sustain itself? Here's an event that's a free event. At the Tour de France, you stand on the side of the road. It is a free event. You watch it on TV for free. So how does it sustain itself? Do, do, obviously, through TV rights, through uh, sponsorship, through other, you know, a few other revenue streams. But it's not a, it's not, it's never been a ticketed event. So this is a new twist on that, where they they've basically uh, fenced off this part of Denver, and you have to have a ticket to come either to the rock show or a ticket to come to the bike race, and you can see both, or you can see one or and not the other. It it it's interesting, and um, you know, I, just and we touched on this a second ago. Like any new event, I mean, if you have a new event, the thing you want to happen is you want it to go off, especially day one, completely seamlessly. And and unfortunately for these guys uh, and gals, although the, the the ladies did race today in in, in nice conditions, but it, it was a tough start for for a new event. And 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 the weather was just in this in this state, especially in the month of, month of August. You can't bet on the weather. It's just never predictable, and, and we know that the afternoons are often volatile and, and stormy, and, and they saw that today. And So what does that mean, right? That means that fewer people are going to go stand on the side of the road. I mean, the, 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 the race today went through the Garden of the Gods, arguably one of the most beautiful places in this state, if not the country. So you have fewer people that are going to willing to stand there and hail storms. The TV coverage goes out, which they couldn't prevent. The satellite plane had to land. Um, and then, you know, it's just a tough pill to swallow right out the gate. Well, let's talk about that, because as we're talking about stage one, we got to see very little of it. <laughs> I mean, I, that's an understatement. Yeah. Even the, you know, the other commentators that are doing it live, the commentators that are doing it live, they lose their feet. They have nothing to talk about. I mean, as far as what's going on right. in the race. Right. And there's just a lot of dynamics at place here. You know, the logistics of trying to get a bike race on television is unbelievable. And it entails a plane hosting a satellite feed. Yep. And that plane circles around above. Yep. And that's where those, those, the, those views coming from the, the motos on the road and the, you know, all your overhead views, it all links to this plane. And then the plane gets grounded because if anybody didn't, didn't see it, uh, you know, we were watching on, a, on the uh, satellite feed or the web feed, uh, excuse me. And, you know, the plane was dealing with lightning and yep. the ice on the wings. <laughs> I mean, the altitude, the temperatures, it's like, it's a right. gnarly thing to try to pull off. So what they're going to have to do is is in the telecast, uh, I'm assuming later today, they're scrambling. That they have footage. They have mm -hmm. the footage from the actual. It, it's going to be like, it is going to be like, uh, uh, I'm assuming if, if you're sitting at home and you watch it four hours from now, it's going to be like watching the tour or, you know, in the old days, the Tour de Pont or the, even the Coors Classic um, in the evening. They're going to package it up. They're mm -hmm. going to have they have footage from the motorcycles. They have footage uh, maybe from some helicopters. So they 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 put that together and, they, and then they put together the package and that's going to be some show. But um, look. Hey, if it's any, just bad luck. It, yeah, it's just one of those things. And uh, if anyone's complaining about the coverage that was breaking up on the web 
I, I remember this. You may, but I remember when you had to wait till the the a lot of the like the the classics were filmed, edited, and put on VHS tapes, and you would go rent them at the local bike shop. Yeah, months and months later. Yeah, so <laughs> keep that in mind. Right. But it was uh, a throwback, <laughs> throwback Thursday. <laughs> right. You will get to see a lot of those highlights that happen today, and it'll it'll be on the the, the recaps. I'm hey, sure JB, people... before we go any farther, can I talk about something right quick? Because I want to talk about where we are. Yeah. And and um, for those who have followed this podcast during the month of July, and asked for the podcast to continue at other races, first of all, thank you. We decided to come down here, and, and it, it, it's no secret if you follow the sport and follow this podcast that that it wasn't controversy free. And uh, it, w- while to me it seemed uh, innocent enough uh, it, it, it for for other people involved in in various aspects of this sport and other sports it wasn't it wasn't controversy free and so uh, they intervened there was drama for several days and and we you and I and this race decided to mutually separate and and just not uh, hurt this event because that was the threat so when these other parties came along, it, it was very clear that they that their intention, if, if this relationship stayed, their intention was to hurt this event. Mm-hmm. And so I don't know about you. I do. I think I know how you feel, JB. But for me, the, the, the uh, even the slightest potential of hurting this event uh, wasn't an option. So uh, we, you know, we, we sort of separated, and here we are sitting in, in this really cool part of Denver. But what I want to say is a big shout out. Uh, to the Infinite Monkey Theorem for letting us crash the airstream here. What is that noise? It's the the uh, roof vents closing because it's starting to rain here again in Denver. It has uh, an automatic rain sensor. That is crazy. <laughs> so the Infinite Monkey. So here is an urban winery right in 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 a little outskirt. You know the the this little artsy hipster uh, neighborhood outside of Denver, and. Um, Really cool of them. Ben Parsons, the guy who founded this place, uh, loves wine. Uh, we've yet to meet him yet, but uh, he's got quite the story. He lost his father to cancer. He gives a, proce- a percentage of all the proceeds on all his sales uh, to the University of Colorado Cancer Center. And so um, here we are posted up in, in their, uh, you know, outside of their loading docks. And, and, and from what I can gather, on the course for Saturday and Sunday. So for anybody coming down to the race this weekend, uh, stop on by. We're just sitting here. JB and I are just sitting here talking. <laughs> I know. And you can come by here and try some of their wine. In fact, one of the things they're probably most notable for is the the canned wine, the rosé in a can. As a guy that goes out on the lake a lot, I think that's a brilliant uh, idea. Yeah. It's easy. <laughs> I still can't mention I can't talk about rosé since the 4th of July. <laughs> is that still haunting you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So let's... Um, Let's again. Let's uh, let's let's talk a little bit more about some of the things that are happening here and what's different racing in Colorado versus what's most familiar. Well, I mean, there's so many different things to compare it to, but I think uh, for most people, there's comparisons to the Tour de France. Mm. You're racing four stages versus twenty one. If in, yeah, this is you know for the for the average fan at home who's either new to the sport or or, or hasn't really been paying attention lately. This is very different. And, uh, and and there are a couple things that really stand out. Number one, we spent three weeks talking about a bike race. This is four days. That bike race had nine riders per team. This race has six riders per team. That is a huge difference in, in the sport of cycling. Number three, and probably most importantly, the, the average length of a stage in the Tour de France is is 100-plus miles. These are much, much shorter. So this, this racing will be uh, significantly more... I should say, potentially could be, but it should be much more dynamic. We didn't see it today. Well, actually, we didn't see anything today. But um, yeah, you know, they're racing. They were racing under four hours today. Yeah, every day will be that. Day. Yeah. So this this is a, it's, and we keep saying it. I mean, it's just a new twist on the sport. It is uh, a stage race, so the overall classification counts. If you lost five minutes today, that five minutes is going to count on day four. Um, but it's a it's a different race. So look at the tour. The tour is more or less 200 riders. We had 95 riders start mm. today. That is a wet dream for a professional cyclist. Look around, going, "Oh my God, we're in a breakaway." No, this is the entire field. <laughs> it's it is. How do, how do the lo- dynamics change for um, the riders if it's 16 members? I mean, it's a much smaller field. It's very hard if you if you're in the lead. It's very hard to support the race. You know, because you figure. 
you have your leader, you have you want to keep guys around him that you save for the end, and then just do the math. At the end of that, then you have three guys. The three guys can't control a race, even if right. it's only 95 guys. Um, so controlling a race is a lot harder means – the breakaways are probably harder meaning, to keep out. Meaning, even look at we're, we're about to we're about to say some shit right here where people are going to be like, "Why this is the way cycling should be?" <laughs> it potentially could right. be way more dynamic, mm-hmm. and these breakaways may actually have a chance to stay away. Harder to keep somebody in harder to the control. GC. Harder to control all, on all levels. It's harder to control. mayhem. Mayhem. Yeah, I think that's what you know. People <laughs> like mayhem. Yeah, they you do. might. You might. It would be interesting to see. Look, and I and I was looking through the the start list. We have two riders from the tour. So we watched a bike race for three weeks. Two of those guys are here, Rigo yeah. Ran and Taylor Finney. Nobody else in this race did the Tour de France. So for the listener at home or the viewer at home, you may not know a lot of these names. They're still great athletes, still great cyclists, but you didn't see them in July. To the layperson, you would think on the heels of the Tour de France, Iran and Finney, the two that are doing it, are exponentially better. Are they wet more? I know that's a yes and no. Are they more prepped, or are they are they are they riding on tired legs? It's all about how you come out of the tour. I, I since we didn't have any images from the race, uh, Paul Sherwin and Christian Vanderbilt just had to talk. Which, God bless them. I mean, that would just be that would suck. Just there's no to, castles what am to I talk gonna, about. Yeah, there's no castles. <laughs> there's no no chateaus. What are we going to talk about? <laughs> right. No, you know, no rivers. Um, <laughs> But but Christian did say, and I found this interesting that that uh, sometime within the last two weeks, Taylor Finney produced his highest twenty minute uh, power outage, sustained power uh, outage, um, in, in his life. And so, I don't know. That means maybe he's getting fitter. He's he came out good. Uh, you know, he came out of the, the tour strong. Uran, I don't know where Rigoberto Uran. I mean, on paper, yeah, tomorrow the, the the queen stage of this race, he should just ride away and say, "See you later." It fellas. should be, in to, yeah, to the rest of us that we think that's an easy right. But moment. if I'm Rigoberto Uran and I'm from Colombia, cycling mad country, and I just get second in the tour, my ass is back in Bogota or Medellin or wherever he's from, just fiesta, fiesta, fiesta. Now, and I, if that's the case, it's tough to come to five thousand, six thousand feet tomorrow, ten thousand feet. Okay. Mm. We'll see. Let's talk about, well, this, certainly Iran comes into play here, but let's talk about the altitude here Mm. in Colorado versus the Tour de France because it's a very, very different game, not going from sea level to, what, 6,000-ish feet? They're they're starting at 5,000-ish feet. Denver's the Mile High City, Mm -hmm. so we're just call it 6,000 feet. Tomorrow is at ten thousand feet. There, there is there is a big difference between six thousand and ten thousand. Try to describe that to the average person. <laughs> Most people aren't riding at that kind it, of it's, altitude. It's uh, well, just what's it like to go from zero to six? I mean, mm-hmm. it, 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 you, the, the folks who have come up and skied, or the folks who have come up here and and done ride the Rockies or the Triple Bypass, and not or come to do Leadville, but they haven't given themselves time. That's what it feels like. <laughs> hey, not even. And there's no way around it. <laughs> But not even um, because we have listeners from all over the world, and they may not have. I mean, just not even exercising. It feels different at altitude. And speak, speak for yourself. <laughs> Is our Facebook thing working, Dave? Thank God. <laughs> what? No. What's with the altitude? I just I'm t- just trying to help people understand it, that. Here's in, in, it's in because people think uh, not really looking at the numbers. They think Alpe d'Huez, when they see it, how it looks like the moon, is taller than anything they're riding That's out here because it's so lush yeah, and beautiful. Yeah, yeah. The tree line, it's different. And so uh, now the one thing I will say is most of these riders spent the last week in Utah for the Tour of Utah, which is a, another great race that's been around for, for quite a few years. So they are acclimated. They, they not only were at altitude, they had raced at altitude. They had three days off in between. I think that's plenty of time uh, recovery. Uh, but th- those guys who did do that are adjusted to this altitude. Having said that, you never truly adjust. It doesn't. It's not like uh, you, it's you, just you harder. Can, you, you, you can't expect. Yeah, you can't expect the same power uh, output at this al- elevation. So, um, but those most of these guys, and I think that's obviously well planned on their part and well planned on these races to, to put them back to back. Most of them are adjusted, but if you but if you didn't do that and you came from sea level, tomorrow is going to be one of the one of the worst days you can imagine. 
this may be a dumb question, but if you, let's say you live and you grew up at altitude, your lifestyle is at altitude. Yep. When you leave it and go do this, I mean, does it carry over? Is it a temporary thing? When you go back to sea level for a while, does it all go away, or does that stay with your body right. chemistry I'm, to a degree? I'm not an exercise physiologist, but my sense is that um, you always reacclimate better, and uh, which could favor you, a Colombian you, you rider, right? You, of course, you don't keep it. I mean, you obviously, if you go to see they, they, if they were in France for three weeks, you lose it. That's it. I mean, you but but that readjustment back to whether it's five, six. 10,000 feet, whatever it is, it's just easier for them. Okay. Well, not only are they in the mountains at higher, higher altitude, they're dealing with some storms, which, yep. which interrupted a lot of, most of the coverage today. We're going to see it every day. This, okay. this okay. is the norm. This is the norm. <laughs> you will see it every day. By the way, this state, it was in the midst of a pretty serious drought, so they really need the storms. Uh, it sucks for the guys on the bike. It sucks for the fans at home if they can't, if it breaks up the feed. Um, but the state, just from a dryness and a, and, a, and a safety standpoint, really needs it. But I think we'll see them every day. So we could see that could be a, a big factor tomorrow with fast descents. Um, we saw when the footage, when they were ha getting some of the feed as they got into Colorado Springs today, it looked like three inches of flowing water on some of the turns yeah. as they came there, into There was the standing water. That was, and there was, and, and Christian and Paul Sherwin were talking about what the commissars would do. Uh, do. You know, obviously they let the race go on. We did see the finish. Congratulations to our good friend Georgine Cappy's team, John Murphy, for winning the field sprint. Tough, interesting to watch a field sprint where you can't see it from the helicopter angle. Like we talked about this during the tour. So head on, you're like, uh, there's there's five guys. There's a, there's a five man photo finish. Mm -hmm. and, and if you don't see it from that that helicopter angle, it is it is totally and completely different but john murphy uh won the field sprint this, this is an interesting story i did a camp at george's hotel months ago and uh the, the the this was for just the person that wanted to pay and come to a training camp at his killer hotel the hotel domestique but uh as that camp was wrapping up his young kids came in for their for their uh, spring training camp and there was this one guy on the ride and i'm like because I always worked off the assumption or thought that these were uh, under-23 teams. So these young kids, I see I see. They this all guy, look like they're under-23. Except you know, for one guy. <laughs> I'm like, who's this old fucker? <laughs> and he's talking about his kid. Mm -hmm. He's like, I'm like, what's this old guy doing here? Well, it turns out that these teams are now pro-conti teams. They're not U-20. So that, that was John Murphy. He's 32 years old. Oh, really? And I'm like, okay, I, you didn't look like you were 23. But he won today. Just smoked those guys. Okay. Good for him. Uh, what's it like sprinting in the rain? I mean, I know that's not your expertise. It wasn't your – yeah. that's not your thing, but you've done it. It, it Listen, a 95-man field, which at that point in the race, six laps of the Garden of Gods, it was, was probably down to 60. Big difference. I mean, the stress level, uh, much, much less. And, um, yeah, that, that's where that small field will, will change – We'll change that dynamic. We'll change the stress level for those guys, for those teams, for every, everybody that's left at the end of the race. I was the the biggest problem I had today was not the the, the coverage that was breaking up, and but and they said at the end there are no podium girls. Did you see that? No, I didn't. See that. They're not having podium girls. I mean, what kind of shit is that? Well, they, the other thing we need to bring up. Is they have a women's race here as well, which we got to give some love to. We, uh, well, I know, and, I, and I, that's right. Maybe and we, that's why they we, took the podium girls out. No, they they wanted the, the quote unquote legends of the sport to to present the awards. I don't know. I, I I'm I'm I, I may be getting myself in trouble, but I don't agree. JB, let's talk about the women's race. <laughs> You're like, dude, that's like the toughest segue. <laughs> Where are the podium girls? Let's talk about the women's race. Yeah. That may be the reason hey. for it. Because we, we don't know. We're not privy to that conversation. But having a women's race Let's... may be part of that equation. Yeah. I have no idea. I don't either. I don't either. It's a decision they made. So they, a couple things before we talk about the, the, the women's race. Um, I think something that they're doing in the next few days that I think is good to get people out to watch one. Mm. Like, I'm going to, I'm going to trump myself again here. Even though it was pouring rain today, I was disappointed not to see people lined up on the streets. Yeah. 
you know, if I've learned anything in the time I've been in Colorado this summer is everyone's got the gear. Yeah. You people, like, all got the gear. Right. Get out there and watch. They're riding in the rain. You can stand there and watch in the I, rain. JB, I'd rather ride in the rain than stand in the rain, buddy. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's – but, yeah, people, if you're coming out the next two or three Plan days, on it. gear up. I mean, it is going to be raining. Bring – the most bomber rain jacket you got, bring an umbrella, mm-hmm. bring, it's Plan just, on it's, it. you might most certainly, well, not might, you are going to get wet. So, um, but also to this circuit, I don't know, you know, we don't know the setup. We're in Denver there in the Springs. I don't know if there was a big screen. I don't know if they could stay and watch. I mean, if, if you're not watching a big screen and maybe they were, but if you're not and, and it's pouring rain, well, you're going to go find shelter because you mm-hmm. know, it's a circuit and they're going to come back around and they're not. So, uh, but anyways, moral of the story, bring gear. They're going to stand there. That's another dynamic I wanted to talk about that you'll see in the next few days if you're watching, or we'll be talking about it uh, if you're just catching it here. But for those of you who watch the Tour de France, you see the the show in, in, uh, in Paris, in the mm-hmm. Champs-Élysées. They do a circuit, yep. a very small one, but they do it. And it's a nice show. It's great for the fans. What they've done with the Colorado Classic that I like um, for for the fan perspective, is they've got these nice circuits. So, you know, you don't make this investment of time and bringing the family down and all that stuff and blip, the riders go right. by. You'll get to see them six, eight times on some of these, yeah. which I think is great. But it's my pr- question for you is do the riders like that or does it sort of equalize the, this is the, the, the former part of the yeah, race? Yeah, these are not criteriums, right? Our right. country – you know, for the for the last forty years, cycling in America was was a criterion. was a was a was a one mile circuit or even less, where you just went around and around and around. If you'd have thrown a European into something like that, they'd be like, "No, we're not, we're mm-hmm. not racing on this." And so, uh, these these circuits are longer, and it's 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 still a circuit. It's still they still get multiple opportunities, but it's not as tight as that. Um, so, as a rider, do you like it though? I, I wouldn't I I wouldn't have minded it because I grew up racing crits. Yeah. But a European that they, they grew up racing traditional style bike races would would hate it. Okay. Let's talk about the women's bike race before I get in trouble. <laughs> Please. Well, you know, it, in, I spent I have to just say uh, Nicola Kramer, who's a sweet the sweetest lady. She um, she runs the Show Air 2020 team, and and she was in Aspen all of last week. So I I had the chance to talk to her. Uh, numerous times this week, although not as much as I wanted to. Uh, her, her girl won today, her team, Jen Valente, who's a track rider, uh, won the field sprint today in Colorado Springs, clearly the one with the most uh, the most speed coming off the track. Um, but congratulations to Nicola, the whole Show Air 2020 team. And, um, you know, this is big for them. This is, this is, this is not... Uh, this is a big stage for women cycling, and, and mm-hmm. I think that, and I know that there is so much controversy around the separation of the events. And I'm just, and I, I'm probably a little out of my lane here, but but the fact that the tour doesn't have a, a, a coinciding women's tour de France, the fact that prize money, even in most races, is very different, and then it gets into media coverage and exposure and, and et cetera, et cetera. So. Um, you know, the women want, they want the mic and, and well, it's, it's hard to get the, um, media spot. It's hard to get the sponsors for your team without the media coverage. Sure. That's a, that's a step in the right direction. Here's what I, I I'm the, one of the first things that popped in my head about the women's race. And you may or may not know the answer to this. Take your best guess, but there, how much depth is there? And what I mean by that is, are there, are there 10 women who just can, and we didn't get to see it today. Do they, they could just ride away and there's a big gap or is it out of the whole field? Are they all on an, on par with each other? Yeah, we're going to find that out. Sense? We're going to find out. That's tomorrow. what I want to see. We're going to find out tomorrow. Okay, we'll keep an eye on that. I, mean, I want to know. So, so tomorrow the men do 10 laps in Breckenridge. Mm-hmm. The women do five. But it's still, you know, that's, you know, although I would love to get Nicola or any of these women's perspective, I mean, the, the, the race is 32 miles. Like, I've ridden with a lot of these 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 women, thirty two miles. They, they can ride one hundred and thirty two miles. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but having said that, the men's race is short too. But um, which favors a track? Sprinter. Well, not tomorrow, but the, tomorrow is so hard for for anybody. I don't care if you're a man, mm-hmm. a woman, or an alien. It's well, it's tough. I, you know, we again we didn't get to. See, we're we're looking forward to talking more about the women's race. We just with the limited coverage because of the weather, uh, we didn't get to see much. But it's, to their point. Yeah, it, to their point. Yeah, that would have been the race we'd have seen today. Yeah, 
you know, just with my Texas amateur racing, the women were also uh, often clumped in with my category. The masters. As, masters are a cat three. That's the word. You want to you you shit all over yourself as a race promoter? You throw the women in with the masters dudes or the junior men. Yeah, the junior boys. Well, I I had experience with it as a cat three, where the women are in there, and then you liked you, know, you liked that. Though. Well, no, I just it, it, well, it's not horrible. It's just it's just an interesting dynamic because yeah. if there's a breakaway and there's one woman in it and four guys, it's hold that she's got guy teammates yep. f- for the break. So to have women having their own race like this yep. is. is it was a good, huge yeah. step for up reasons you may not have thought of. And not to, and, and seriously though, not to, not to uh, pass judgment on promoters because it is hard to juggle that many classes. Mm-hmm. Are you, it's not like you can. At some point, and this is what they've done. They've tried to get creative. It, it's same for at the highest level, like we saw today, or what you would see at the tour. It's tough to just manage that logistically. There's so there's only so many hours in a day and so much hours of daylight. Like it gets tough. Um, but, I, but, 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 you know, the, the, we're seeing more and more of, look at, I love tennis. I love it less than I used to love. It. I loved it more when I could watch Sampras and Agassi and Courier and all the Americans. Um, but I, I look at, look at the, the women's game in tennis. Like I would, if, if it was friggin' Serena Williams and somebody else, I'd just soon watch that than yeah. Djokovic or Nadal. I mean, somehow the There's sport... That- there's has, actually a volley for a while. Well, I don't just or, or, serve. And, and again, it, this may be about, and we talked about this at the tour. This may be about the personalities. Like I love tennis, and I love, and I can watch the, the Wimbledon finals for women if Serena Williams is there. But if it's the Belarusian and the and the you know the, the Croatian, I mean, nah. So th- what I'm saying is those personalities is what we have to build and 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 promote and develop over time. Speaking of personalities, and every sport could take a page. Not, not to rag said. on the Belarusians. No, but every, that's almost true with every sport. You know, those big personalities in football and soccer, they get the TV time. Yeah. They get the interviews. They get the headlines. If that's there, you can showcase it, which reminds me, um, Taylor Finney was our most aggressive writer today. Of course. He's getting, he, but he deserved it. He, he deserved it. And this is this is uh, home country for him right here in Colorado, cool. but he's a good example. You know, it might rub some people kind of funny when he's making his goofy videos and he's a little out there, but he's doing something different as a personality in what's happening. He's getting interviewed and he's getting TV time. Whatever, he's the biggest personality <laughs> that that this country has in cycling. So that that that's a that's a fact, and nobody's yeah. going to debate that. And with that comes with that turf comes. Your your lovers and your haters, your yeah. supporters and your detractors, and and the, what, by the way, do you think he gives a shit? No, doesn't seem to. No, it doesn't seem like it. So <laughs> yeah. he's um, not going to take criticism keep for on. the way he acts. Keep I know. On. It's just a good example of a personality getting out there. I loved. I, I saw a photo of the team presentation yesterday at the Colorado Classic, and you know, back in the day, they were like, "You have to wear this, and you have to wear that." And he had the team shirt on, but he had like some. Some hipster cut off jean shorts, and I was like, "Oh man, that's so filthy!" <laughs> like we'd have done that back in the day. Shit. Before we move on to uh, taking a look at tomorrow and what to look for and what we might be talking about, um, you know, you know, what else do we need to talk about with uh, today's race? Um, you know, I mean. Because again, we didn't get to see much of no, it, but there's, no, there's not there's, much. Of so we can't even really. What I'm saying about tomorrow is we can't even really make a prediction because we didn't get to see anything. Right, but you're right, and we don't. And and, and like a lot of us, we don't know all of these. But let me just say a couple of things that I re- I made notes of this. Um, tomorrow is the hardest day of the bike race, so that's what we, we talked about it during the tour. This this the queen stage. It's not that long, but there's they're going over that climb ten times. One thing that I do think is critically important is the the order of the cars that has been established today. So the order of the team cars behind the peloton yeah. is established by the, the GC from the day before. So you look at you know some of these guys that 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 you want your team car as close to you as you as you, as you can be because there's going to be people getting dropped. The car has to go around logistically. If you have a mechanical, if you need a bottle, et cetera, et cetera, you want the team car close. So 
today, I mean, you saw these teams like Georgia's team, Hollow Wesco, Citadel. You saw Axel's team, Action, you know, getting third. You have these teams that are up there that are, uh, you know, that are going to be close to their guys. That's a big deal. That's, uh, you know, it, it is what it is. I think tomorrow, too, you'll see, you'll see guys start with one bottle, even no bottles. You know, because you'll know that every lap you're going to have your, your Swaniers, your team staff on the side of the road handing you bottles. Uh, it's going to be a short, explosive stage. The, the other interesting thing, and we got this memo uh, about the communique. So the, the, um, the time cut, and we talked about this in the tour, where if you're too far behind, you get cut out of the, you get kicked out of the race. So they've got this whole thing set up so that, um, you know, for riders that are getting lapped, they're going to be people getting lapped. Men and women are going to be getting lapped tomorrow. Oh, because of the circuit finish, you can't right. have people trailing in. Right. Which makes them have to cut them right. off. So what they've said is mm -hmm. that anybody that makes it the first eight laps without getting lapped, then they're still in the race. If you get lapped before the start of the eighth lap or before the start of the ninth lap, then you, quote, unquote, miss the time cut. So you're out of the race. Whole okay. new, like, I, I can't even believe I'm reading this, but. So that's where this whole circuit thing at the end becomes a much bigger factor. Yeah. In France, it's the last day. It's, it's over, yeah. right? No, but this is a classic circuit race. That's what, that's what it is. So we will see out of a, what's the, the total field is less than 100. Yeah. There could be. There could be. With the climbing, the speed. Yep. It depends, obviously it depends cut. what happens in the race, but uh, the fact that the, 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 the that the UCI sent out the communique saying that's how we're going to establish the time cut okay. is, is they're expecting people to get lapped. And so with the, which, climb, with the climbing tomorrow, and you've already broken that down for us a bit on how the uh, controlling the race is not as easy. Right. It's a smaller team, smaller field. Will it just be, or it should be, just attack, attack, attack? Just, I mean, if, if they can, you know, are chasing down just, Look for the next guy to go, go, go. Well, I think you'll Is that have, what we you'll, would see? You'll, you'll have these guys that, that, um, that, that just find shared interests. Just, just, they're not on the same team. They're not on the, in the same jersey, but they're going to find their friends and find their allies, if need be. We'll see. I mean, hopefully. I mean, uh, does, again, that, does that whole friends and allies from other teams and working together? Yeah. When it's the, I mean, when it's these shorter stages in four days, does it still... We'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll call it out for you tomorrow. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. On that note, does it come to play f for Americans on their home turf to work together? We saw with a little bit of the broken up coverage, there were a few Itali Italians in a break. Yep. Do American... Will Americans align? It's just You just never know. I mean, there are plenty of Americans that completely hate each other, and there are plenty that just that they're old homies and train together every day. Yeah, and and who knows? We don't know. We don't do know. We? All right. All right. Okay. Well, uh, again, check out what's going to be happening here in the next few days. Uh, if you are going to be in color, I know we're talking to a small percentage. The it's a pretty cool event. The last couple of days here in Denver yep. with music, we've got yeah, Death down Cab for Cutie, Wilco, Old Ninety Sevens, Jayhawks, Jayhawks, just to name a few. Come on, when is the last time I, you saw the Jayhawks? I know. I mean, come stuff. what? Come buy my stuff. Oh yeah, come by and Higgs. <laughs> we, Higgs we restocked the store. I was like, where is for that all those, voice coming for, from? For all the people that that are so frustrated that the We Do Shop keeps getting emptied out, we we brought how many teas we bring Higgs. 300 tees. we got 300 tees. your favorite ones. And the, and the ones very, very popular yeah. Suffer shirts. Yeah, the Suffer and the stages. Here. So you guys come down here and get them at the, at the Infinite Monkey Theorem. Yeah, thank you to our friends at Infinite Monkey. Really appreciate it and uh, for hosting us here. Uh, if you want to come by and say hi, this is, uh, this is actually a nice thing that this is where we're camped out for yeah. four days. Send those comments, all right? Yeah. Send us some stuff. And if you listen to the Tour de France podcast, I will tee those up. For Lance, you can do comments on Facebook Live. You can send them to stages at we do sport dot com. All right. Thank you, guys and gals.